What's up guys, Hong OG Fitness. And in today's video, we're, we're gonna talk about self-defense and um, the legal aspect to it, right? Uh, I, I got a question from a, a subscriber uh, asking me uh, what my opinions were uh, on it, right? Because uh, of course, in a self, self-defense situation where if you, well, you know, you're defending yourself, but then you throw a punch, then all of a sudden, you know, uh, what happens then, right? So, like, how, essentially, what the subscriber was asking was that, okay, well, where's the fine line between, you know, self-defense and how much can you do before you actually get into trouble or what can you do, right? Because, I mean, if you, and, okay, so, first things first. Oh, like the video, subscribe comment, share, and notification bell. That way it helps me grow the channel and I can keep doing this. And uh, you know, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. I, and for those of you guys who don't know, 41 years old, okay, brown belt in judo. I started at 36, 37. I'm a little bit fuzzy uh, regarding the year there, but it's been about four or five years that I've been doing judo. I've been doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu for, well, I've done Brazilian jiu-jitsu, sorry, for about maybe six, something like that, right? Six years. And uh, prior to that, a whole bunch of other martial arts uh, when I was younger, right? So um, I've, I've done Kung Fu, I've done uh, uh, Taekwondo, I've done, uh, and of course I've touched a lot. I touched on boxing, uh, freestyle wrestling, Muay Thai, you know, and uh, I even did a little bit of self-defense stuff at one point with this dude, uh, you know, I, and uh, this guy, this guy learned like, uh, it was a whole bunch of stuff like Chinese Kung Fu and, and, and Vietnamese Kung Fu and all that. Uh, yeah, so anyways, lifelong martial artist and uh, going from my childhood dream, which is uh, world title, national title, before that, black belt in judo first, of course, right? Uh, as soon as this quarantine is over, get back into it. So right now, taking advantage of the time off to train, to heal my injuries, to work on all my mobility issues, which uh, you guys probably, a lot of you guys who train a lot or have been training for a while or, or who are even older, you guys all have these issues. Okay, that being said, Okay, let's get back into uh, the subject, which is, okay, self-defense and the legal aspects of it. Uh, what can you do? What can't you do? Well, first of all, it depends where you live, right? Everywhere it's different, right? But generally speaking, generally speaking, I live in Canada, uh, Montreal, Quebec, right? Up north a little bit there, east, and uh, not too far from New York, If for those of you guys who, uh, who are interested in knowing that. Okay, and... There's a fine line, man, I'm telling you, like, uh, you know, you could talk all you want about self-defense and, and stuff like that, but the best self-defense is not to fight, period, period. I know that's going to sound funny coming from a guy like me, right? But uh, that's my conclude, not conclusion, but that's where my thought process is at at this age, right? It's not good to fight. It really isn't like you should avoid it at all costs. If you're hanging around bars and stuff like that and getting into fights, well, guess what? You know, and, and you get into fights and you got to defend yourself. I mean, okay, well, already that in itself is already a problem because you're hanging. I'm not saying not to hang out in bars, but I mean, you know, um, okay, let me, let, let me just take a step back. You got to avoid fighting, right? That's the best self-defense. You know, you don't have to worry about legal repercussions if you're not involved in anything that could potentially get your ass sued or, or land your ass in jail, okay? So fighting, like I've done a lot of fighting in my 20s. That's all I did. Well, actually even 18 to, yeah. No, eight, I would say for a good... Man. Yeah, I would say a good three years, man. 18 to 21, man, I was... I was in it all the time in gangs and stuff like that. I was fighting. I was doing all kinds of stuff in bars and you know drinking and you know smoking and all that. So, you know, and so and of course I got into into a little bit of trouble too. You know, for those of you guys who know, um, but that's the thing. Don't fight. Like, and it, I know it's easier said than done, but you got you got to change your mentality here. Okay, like um, if if you like. Self-defense, the best self-defense is not to fight. It's not, it's really to avoid trouble, okay? Now, that being said, like, um, if, you're, if, if, if you worry so much about self-defense, like, you have to ask yourself the question, okay, why? Why am I so worried about self-defense? Like, did I get bullied? You know, 
okay, if you, if you got bullied, listen, you go train a little bit for a couple of months, man, six months, a year. Uh, after that, you're not going to be worried about bullying anymore because you, you, you've been through the ringer, you, you've been training, you've been sparring, you got hit, you, you know, and you, you took it and then you, you, uh, you're able to um, uh, take a beating, give a beating, come out of it, you know, take the emotion out of it, understand what's going on in terms of fighting. You train a bit for six months, a year, man, you ain't worried about bullying, okay? That's, that's one thing. Now, if you're worried about self-defense because you live in a dangerous area, man, dude, you gotta, you gotta, out of, you gotta make plans to move out of there, one, right? And two, well, you gotta avoid, you know, like confrontation at all costs, right? Because there's just too much things that can go wrong when you fight. So the way it works is that, and this is so, so arbitrary, man. I mean, yeah, there's laws and stuff for that, but here's the thing. If you, if somebody attacks you, okay? and you, you, you punch him, right, in self-defense. But then, okay, if you, you know, so let's say he punches you, but here's the thing, right, there's a lot of nuances and, and like depends, man, who, it's gonna be your word against his or, or to witnesses or a lot of people don't have cameras, so you have to be careful about that. So let's say somebody comes up to you and throws a punch, right, throws a punch and of, and of course you, Let's say you, you, you're you able to block and then you throw a punch and you knock him out, boom. That has to be the end of it, essentially, right? You can't be, you can't continue wailing on him. So let's say he throws a punch, okay? You kind of block or you kind of take it, right? And then you throw one back, you hit him, okay? And then of course, now if you keep wailing on him, bam, bam, all of a sudden you turn into the aggressor, right? And if you beat the living crap out of him, right? Then you're gonna get in trouble because there's a uh, there's a thing called the um, uh, uh, man I forgot the word it's called not not, not the minimum force uh, but uh, uh, maximum force required or, or something like that you know to defuse the situation you can't go overboard that's what I'm saying okay like uh, the term might come to me while we're in this video but you can't go, there's a fine line you can't go overboard so if you if he punches you you dodge you punch him back and he's out, you gotta stop there. Now, if you punch him back, and then after that, uh, you know, like, he punches you again, and you start, you guys go, both, go, both go at it, then it's, it's really gonna depend on the judge, man, you know? And I know that in, in some, some states, supposedly, you know, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but you could actually uh, argue about, like, you could actually uh, tell the other person, um, like, both consent to fighting, right? I don't know if that's true or not, I heard that, so, you know, you guys uh, let me know. But here, that's the way it is, you know, like where I live. It's like, okay, self-defense scenario. Okay, the guy, the guy pushes you. Like if he just pushes you and you deck him, you're the aggressor automatically. If he decks you and you're not knocked out and then after that you, you fight back, well, that's okay to a certain extent, right? To a certain extent. Because as soon as it looks like you have the upper hand and you keep on beating on him, you're done. Like in a court of law, that you, you, you lost, you know? So yeah, he might get charged, but you might get charged too. You see what I mean? So, and of course, in a grappling situation, well, I think the same thing, it would be more uh, better viewed, right? If you're able to, let's say, uh, do BJJ, okay, somebody comes at you, okay, you grab him and then you bring him to the floor. And then, um, you know, you could, I, I don't think you could break anything though, because if you break something, it's gonna look bad in court. You always have to think, okay, the person, the judge, what is the judge gonna think, right? So if you take it to the ground and you, you friggin' snap their, uh, their shoulder like in half and break their arm and you're the aggressor, right? Now, if you take them to the ground and you control them, well, you might say to yourself, yeah, but you know, you want to end it because you don't want to stand there all day and wait for it to diffuse. So, you know, um, Unfortunately, that's what it is, man. So I think that, uh, or you choke him out. I think the best case scenario, like you're holding on, you get the rear naked choke, you choke him out, you know? But of course you gotta be careful with that. If you hold the choke on too long, you're gonna kill the guy, right? So see, once again, that's why I don't, uh, I don't agree in fighting. Now, worst case you could do, yeah, you can neutralize him that way, <clears throat> choke him out, you know, let him pass out and boom, you're done, right? Or you could just control him until uh, until he calms down, kind of thing. You know, if that's even a possibility. Now with judo, hmm. Let's say if somebody, uh, I think judo would pass better, right, in a self-defense scenario if you're able to pull it off. Let's say, for example, um, the guy swings at you, all right, starts starts attacking you, 
and then you clinch up and you throw them and you knock them out because <laughs> you concuss them, right? And 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 or you broke his arm because you know he fell and he stuck his arm out there like uh, like most people who don't know how to judo, then that could be pretty much the end of it, you know? Like um and even even if he broke his arm and he's he's drunk or on drugs and still able to get up and stuff like that, he won't he won't be able to do much uh much damage with a with a busted arm or, or dislocated shoulder or anything like that. But most likely he'll just like be out, right? So if you do if if that's the case, then I believe that like a judge will see it more as okay, so the guy rushed him attacked him and this guy in self-defense like he just not sure what he did let's let's we're assuming the judge doesn't know what the hell judo is right just wow you know did a self-defense move there was no there was no striking involved he just threw the guy boom and the guy landed and the guy was like done then he, oh reasonable force that's the word i'm looking for guys reasonable force when it comes to self-defense What's reasonable? Well, as long as, in my opinion, you don't turn into the aggressor. You don't look from the outside like the aggressor. So if somebody comes at me, starts beating up on me, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, 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 boom, boom, boom. And then after that, like, ah, oh, I duck under, I grab him, walk. I throw the mother, <laughs> I throw the dude, smash him to the ground, and it's done. Then you see, you see how that would look to a judge? Reasonable force, right? Now, if I throw him to the ground, go on the ground, break his arm, choke him out, or choke him out, break his arm, start pounding on him, wake him up again, and pow Guys, that's beyond reasonable force, you know? So, that's the thing. Once it becomes excessive, and that's a fine line too, so you gotta be careful about that. You shouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, wailing on people and stuff like that, but reasonable force, right? And I think that you're better, to con you're better able to control uh, yourself right and and the force that you you know you uh you use right when you when you, is of course being highly trained in grappling right so jiu or brazilian jiu-jitsu or uh or uh judo is is very good right and the reason for that is because well if you're very high level like grappler right then you can you can out grapple you know most uh most chumps most most schmucks on the streets or whatever right but if you're a high level striker well guess what Striking is striking, man. And in the court of law, that's aggression, right? That, that it's, it's, it easily, easily uh, surpasses reasonable force, right? I don't know if you guys agree, but I mean, the guy punches you, you duck under, whack! I mean, all of a sudden, just you doing that action, people look at it and it'll be like, holy sh shit, holy shit, this guy's like, natural born killer kind of guy, you know, like it, it's just a movie thing, you know, like what we see in the media, the movies, boxing, it's just associated more, more, more violence. But whereas most people don't understand what the hell is going on in the grappling scenario. And you, you gotta, you know, maybe uh, imagine that like a judge won't know. So like if somebody throws a punch and you grab them, okay. And then you, you kind of take them down and you choke them out or you control them or you throw them like, but you gotta be careful with the throw though, like uh, because there was a there was a case here in Montreal, right, uh, where I am, because uh, I went to this wrestling club and uh, it was funny because my coach was there first and he told me, hey man, I went to this wrestling club and the first re first thing the coach asked me is why are you learning wrestling, and then uh, my coach told him, well you know I'm just perfecting, you know like I, I do judo but I want to learn more uh, takedowns with you know without the jacket and all that and and perfect it and. And I, I really want to, uh, you know, like uh, improve my my game and round it off with wrestling because there's no, you know, there's no, there's not a lot of uh, there's no more attacking the legs in judo. And he's and then the coach, the wrestling coach, was like, okay, because here's the thing, I don't train people who street fight, right? Here, like, I, I never want to hear anybody here training for street fight. And if you're training for street fight, this is not the place for you, for you. You have to get the hell out, right? Because and then uh, he told me because then he told my coach. Well, here's the thing, because uh, there was this, there was somebody who was training here, and then he uh, he got into a street fight and he suplexed the guy, right? Remember that suplex guys broke his neck, I think, near killed them or sent them like into a coma or some craziness like that. And then the cops 
found out this guy was part of this wrestling club and he came to the wrestling club and asked him what the hell is going on? What is this? You know, blah, blah, blah. Do you know this guy? And all kinds of stuff. So that being said, a fro is good, but you got to be a little bit careful. Like a suplex, people kind of know what a suplex is, man. And it's kind of evident what you're trying to do, which is like to smash his head and break his neck. That's what a suplex is. Okay. So no suplexing guys. I mean, unless it's a life or death situation. I mean, if somebody films that and you suplex the dude, like it's hard to explain, like if another, uh, you know, but even then it's not that hard to explain, man. Uh, you know, you, you grab the guy from the back and he threw him up in the air and he, like he made him land on his, on his head and, uh, broke his neck. It's kind of bad, you know? And, um, so yeah, no suplexing guys. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, if somebody sees that from the outside, it looks violent. It looks, it looks like intentional, premeditated, beyond a reasonable force, you know, uh, for, for a self-defense uh, scenario, man. Imagine somebody throws a punch at you, you block it, you come around, bam, bam, you grab them, clack, you, you grip them from the back, hips under, whack, and you slam them like that, and you, dude, if you kill the guy, chances are, or you send him his ass to the hospital or put him into a coma, you're gonna get in a lot of friggin' trouble, right? So that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, a fro generally is is more subtle, you know? It looks more like, oh, he just did some kind of Aikido move, you know? Like, oh, and the guy just fell and uh, it was over. So reasonable force right there, perfect, right? But if you suplex him, mm. If you punch him, mm, right? And once again, like, you get attacked and then you def you defend by attacking, by striking, right? Very hard to gauge like uh, what's uh, uh, what's reasonable, what's not reasonable, you know, reasonable force and mm. so, and okay, so to get back to what I was saying from the beginning, right, don't, ideally, unless, unless your life depends on it, right? And now uh, I believe that you avoid it at all costs, right? But if somebody, if it's really a life and death scenario and you can't get out of it, well, you already have to have the mindset that if I have to go, then, um, I'll defend myself and you know you can't just be you can't be too extreme in this right so you can't just be like oh if I have to go I'll go to the death no no that's that's short-sighted thinking and that means I used to think that way I used to think oh man if someone messes with me like I'm, I'm not into fighting but if I do I'll kill the guy you know like it, it, I'll see red and I'll, I'll finish it when I decide to finish it it's the wrong way to do it guys it's the wrong way. I believe that you have to, as a martial artist, you have to cultivate and it's not easy. It takes time, right? And it takes somebody to teach you this, but it's called self-control. You don't, you're not a, you're not, you, you're not a true martial artist if you haven't cultivated self-control. You have to have that rage, that animal instinct, that being a fighter and all that, but you gotta be able to do, like control that, control the intensity. It can't be, um, uh, crazy intensity like it has to be at the right intensity for the right duration for the right uh for the right reasons for the right uh um towards the right person like it's it's very difficult i think that actually comes from a, a philosopher i think it was uh one of the guys socrates aristotle or plato but uh you know where he said to be angry is easy right but to be angry at the right person at the right time for the right duration at the right uh the right intensity right uh, at the right level of intensity i mean that's what's difficult right so it's the same thing when it comes to self-defense scenarios so here's the thing like you have to have that self-control that like man okay if you have to defend yourself you have to be able to gauge the situation how bad it really is is this a life or death or is it just like uh you know some drunk that you could like easily just whatever just let it go okay or you know just choke him out like takes two seconds because the guy's not he's not all there so i think you have to be able to assess the fret level and then from there uh justify th then use the appropriate amount of force that's what i'm doing so you kind of have to run scenarios in your mind a little bit right and uh and that's 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 the best way i would go about it so you got to run the scenarios through your mind okay if this is what happens this is what i'm gonna do this is how far i'm willing to go and this and that and then that and then through training through martial arts that's how you develop discipline self-control 
and, and, and stuff like that too. And sometimes you don't, you might not develop that uh, if you're, if you haven't been taught that, but I think that it's a good way to, uh, to, 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 to think, to see things when you do train, right? Because it all comes down to who you train with, your coaches and all that, uh, what they teach you uh, in terms of, that's why I think judo is beautiful and traditional martial arts because there's discipline, there's this, there's that. Of course, nothing, no arts are perfect, no clubs are perfect, you know, and uh, they all have their strengths and weaknesses, so to speak. But uh, it's important to, yes, it's important to know how to fight, know how to defend yourself, but at the same time, you have to have good ethics, uh, good, uh, good values, and good judgment, okay? And be able to um, assess the fret level, so to speak, right? And then use the appropriate amount of force and aggression, right? To not get yourself in trouble. Uh, and sometimes, hell, you know, like if your life, and worst case, if your life is in real danger, well, you know, you do your best to, to, to get out of that, um, get, out, get out of that alive. And ideally, stay out of jail so maybe you might not want to kill the guy or permanently uh, massacre him you know into a coma or whatnot because that has implications too right that being said guys um, the way I look at it is that like eh, I'm not out to fight and of course I use you have to be calm calm under pressure and you have to be confident in your own ability to handle the situation but you can only be confident if you actually trained a lot and you've been through like you know, competition and, and, and drive and this and that, and you, you've been through the ringer and you've been through like a lot of uh, uh, tough, hard training, you know, it makes you much more calmer. So you have to understand how to strike and how to grapple. Grappling is better for self-defense scenario. I'm telling you, striking, it's just pure aggression, man, you know, whereas grappling, you know, so you have to, you have to train in both and you gotta, um, you gotta stay out of trouble. That's my that's that's my suggestion. That's my recommendation. That's the way I see it now. I wasn't always like this, guys. I was I was I was messed up uh, uh, when I was younger. You know that OG isn't just for older guy, right? So, anyways, like the video if you liked it. I hope that made sense. Let me know what you guys think. Where's the line for you guys, uh, or in your in your area, and what do you guys are doing about it to be able to handle yourself? But at the same time, you gotta use your brain. I think life is is. It's all here, man. It's all here. The more I, the more I move forward, the more I realize it's in your head, bro. It's everything is in your mind, you know. So you gotta learn how to use this and control this, and then use the, and of course learn to develop uh, the body and the skills and everything for fighting, right? Because uh, you don't want to be just a meathead. You know how to fight, but you're a dumbass. You know, you, you go around, somebody looks at you funny, say something to your uh, to your girlfriend, and you go and you soup like someone, and you just bounce his head off the pavement, and then what? Well, guess what? Now you're in jail, buddy. You know, or you got you you're in court and you're being sued and all kinds of stuff, and you know, so brains over brawn, but you want the brawn there too. Just saying. All right, guys. So like, comment, subscribe, and uh, of course, notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, challenge. I'm doing a 30-day uh, Van Damme split challenge. I'm setting it up. So go follow me on Facebook. Add me on Facebook, guys, right? And uh, find me there, OG Fitness or Hong Nguyen, right? You're going to see I have a gi on and I'm like this or whatever, or, or I'm going like this and you see my back, whatever. Anyways, find me, guys. Find me there or on IG, right? I have all the information down below. And then from there, I'll add you. I'll put you in the group and we're going to do the, uh, I'm going to go for that Van Damme splits, man. Uh, so I haven't started the challenge yet. I'm setting everything up so that it's nice and ready. And um, when it's on, I'll let you guys know. So you guys uh, do that. Join me over there on Facebook. We're going to do that. And uh, that's it, guys. See you next time. Peace.